going on, everybody? This is John O'Connor with Behind the Barricade Podcast, and I'm with... Daniel Tao. We're with uh, two members of the Orlando, Florida Pump Punk Band, Suck Brick Kid. What's going on, guys? Hi. We have uh, Grant on vocals. Yep. And Artero on uh, guitar. Yep, that's me. Yes. <laughs> so, what's going on? You guys are currently on tour with uh, Unwritten Law and uh, Phoenix TX. How's that going so far? Beautiful. Every day has been awesome. The weather's been good. Driving's been good, except for Atlanta to Baltimore, which was... The worst thing that's ever happened in my whole life. Uh oh, what but, happened? Uh, no, it was just miserable. We left at two in the morning and got in at, I don't even know. Two, I don't know. <laughs> it felt like seven at night the next day yeah. and went directly, just no sleep, played again, and then it was just bad, all around bad. And I'm mm -hmm. assuming there was traffic all over the place too yeah. because Washington, yeah. D.C. is like a gridlock. Yeah, I think it took us three and a half hours to get through D.C. So, you know, it was very fun. Probably the most uh, best time I've had so far on this tour. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It, everything's been great. They're awesome dudes, all of them, in both those bands. So, yeah. yeah. How was the uh, crowd reception so far? It's been great. Uh, Philadelphia was insane. Uh, uh, where, uh, where were we last night? Um, Boston. Boston. Feelings on Tom Brady and the fact that Oh, uh, yeah, I read that post. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if it went over very well. I mean, bottles were thrown. It was just, I don't know. It, it was pretty good. Hey, yeah. you're a fucking Tom Brady, yeah? it, Exactly. <laughs> you know, I actually had to ask the bartenders to stop selling bottles. So, <laughs> and more plastic cups preferred. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, don't know, I kind of just spoke the truth. I mean, hey, it's nothing you know, wrong with that. What uh, exactly. football fans are you? Uh, Dolphins or? No, he's a Dolphin fan. Okay, we got one. It's, it's very uh, unfortunate. But I, I'm a I'm a Steelers fan, and obviously you guys know. You know, we have no Super Bowls. Just throwing that out there. So you guys are. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Jet fan, so we're rivals over here. Oh yeah. Oh, so Jets and Dolphins over here, just you know, sitting in the bottom of the brackets. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a Giants fan, and we're also on the bottom of the brackets. Yeah. Well, at least you guys beat the Patriots every time. Yeah. Yeah. We are 2-0 and in Super Bowls against the Patriots. Yeah. That's 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 something to be proud of. And that's with mm -hmm. them cheating, too. Exactly. Yeah. yeah that's that's and, that's like beating a baseball team on steroids. Yeah. It's like, hey. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, for real. So I kind of told them my true feelings and, you know, kind of. They're just way too passionate up there. They are. Oh, man. I was getting messages today all day <laughs> from people that were there like, you know, you guys are were pretty good, but you, you got to like, you, you know, you can't talk about Tom Brady that way. And it's like, what did I say? You know, he deflated a ball. It's like, yeah, I mean, that's pretty rude. That's what he did, yeah. didn't he? Or it's, he knew it, about it. Yeah. So, I mean, I more or less, I don't know. I tried to smooth it over. I sent many messages today apologizing for our, our uh, forever talking about St. <laughs> Tom Brady. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. I just interviewed a guy. His name was John Schreiber of the band Rainey's Revenge. And I don't know if you guys heard about it, but that was the band that got into, like, quote, unquote, allegedly jumped the uh, tour manager of the Word Alive. Yes, I uh, did read that story. Wasn't it in Florida? Yeah, it was in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shitty things happen in Florida. <laughs> yeah, something about it. But anyways, like the the messages he was getting, like the guys were saying, "Oh right, yeah, you know what? I hope you guys get brain cancer. Hope you fucking die of this." I'm like thinking, I'm like Boston fans are probably the same way. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could I should read you one of the the interactions. It was pretty good. It was like. It was, yeah, Bust he, it we'll out, come it on. Man, I, let me <laughs> no, see you if can't I can tease that one. shit. <laughs> Hold on. I got a screenshot of it. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Uh, where is it? Facebook? What is this shit? Um, oh, yeah. Heard you guys pissed off Boston last night. <laughs> Heard the set sucked, too. Thanks for coming, losers. Period. <laughs> that was the message that was sent. So I said... Thank your mother for having us last night. We appreciate it with a kissy wink face. <laughs> the guy responded back, ha, 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 thumbs up. He said, probably had some shitty merch sales last night, too. Either way, enjoy your day. And we just kind of were screwing with him at this point, trolling him. said, you know, highest sales of the tour. Have a blessed day, brother. And he, uh, and he responded back, and he's like, you know, you guys are, you know, you're cool. Uh, you know, I'm real, I would actually come see you guys again. And I, I was like, Boston fan people have a really weird way of expressing that their love. their love it's like hey you guys are you know i don't really like it but you know i'd come see you again you know so it's like and, and it's, we, it's like being and I heard assholes with your best friend you yeah know? it's yeah. like hey your set sucked but i want to come see that again yeah. you know so <laughs> but yeah i was i mean was just cool. come with better bands so i have a reason to be there not just <laughs> yeah. you guys yeah. baltimore was uh baltimore yeah. and uh and, you know it it was weird because it had like a 12 foot barricade in depth from the stage so it was it's a very odd uh where were you at the auto bar was it yeah it was called uh baltimore sound stage oh okay yeah and it had it like i said it was like you and the lights were so bright you can't even they look like you're not there's no people more or less it's just like 
the stage and then 12 feet and then a barricade and then people. Oh, God. So it's, it was really weird. It was so unnecessary. Especially weird for a pop punk show or a punk show, you know, when yeah. you thrive on audience participation. Yeah, absolutely. It was definitely a buy or sell show. It was kind of like a... It's just weird. Just buy yourselves. We're not used to the shows like that. We like smaller, intimate environments, but you know. Well, I mean, it's it's like you're on the you're on the Tonight Show, and <laughs> you're just thinking, okay, people are actually watching this. Can't see them, but yeah, we would be terrible on the Tonight Show. But <laughs> I hope that uh, we never do that. Kind of. I mean, I wish we would, we would be capable of doing things like that, but we would be awful. Look, I think the lowest standard was uh, Census Fail when they played on Conan. I, I don't know if you guys seen that YouTube. Yeah. Look up that YouTube video. It is uh, not good. Yeah. Most I mean, the, obviously they improved. Uh. <laughs> it's just so I, I, most bands like that are not going to do well in a weird environment like that. It's like shooting a music video every time you're like, what are we doing? This is so dumb. If somebody drives by, you're like, what are these idiots doing? Just jumping around and acting crazy. There's nobody even here watching you. Know? Do you guys have yeah. any music videos or? Uh, we've shot something that we haven't released because okay. we're kind of eh, on it. But I think we're going to put out something here soon. We kind of smart punk released the record and we've kind of been slowly teasing it for a while it's been out for a few months but we haven't really we released one single which is believe and then now i think we're gonna launch the second single with a video so oh, that's good <clears throat> how long did uh smart punk have a label for i know they were huge with the clothing line in like the mid 2000s so like any scene gear you didn't get at hot topic you just yeah. go to smart punk it's been about maybe a year and a half or two years okay. i think there's six artists now on the roster and I think it's growing, and I think a lot of their focus is uh, like reissues and whatnot. Uh -huh. Like they're they're doing some. So I, know, I know some things I'm not even allowed to say. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't. There's a bunch of stuff that's coming out at the end of this year. It's going to be awesome for them. So explain, since you're on tour now, <laughs> was it everything you thought it would be as far as when you're traveling from state to state, hours hour, you're like, wow, this really sucks, or is it just? After every show, you get you get out of the you you go back to the van. And you're like, you know what? Playing that show was worth the eight hour drive or however long it took to get there. I think the consensus on this is uh, pretty mutual with everybody. It's, you know, we've all come from touring bands in the past, and you know, we we've taken a little while. We started this band like a year or two ago, and we're like, you know, nothing serious. Let's just play some shows, and we got some opportunities. Obviously, that you know we can't turn down like this. We're like, dude, this is gonna be great, man. We're gonna go on tour again. It's gonna be awesome. We hit the road, and it's trust me, it's one of the coolest things to be on on the road. And with these guys around Law and Phoenix, guys are really cool. But when you're a little older now, the rides are a little bit; they feel a little bit longer. The shows hit you a little bit harder, and you're definitely feeling it a lot more the next day for sure. So it's fun though; it's great. We love it. it touring is great. Um, it's just definitely harder as you get a little bit older here. Do you That's have sure. normal nine to five jobs or this is you're going out on tour every day or yeah no we you know, definitely months? have our nine to five jobs back at home so you know we got uh we got those things going on but like i said it's like one of those things just cool opportunities that come up and you know we just make it work yeah, that's yeah, good. I mean, this is day six of straight of this portion of it. We just did the whole South by run and all that. Mm -hmm. And it like that, as I got all, like, I, we, about 10 years ago, we used to do this a lot, like consistently, all of us. And, you know, we were younger. And now we kind of started this thing. We we're like, well, we'll just get drunk and play shows in Orlando. And, you know, it was never meant to be, you know, something real. And so it kind of it just evolved into this. And it, now I'm not used to playing six shows in a row. I can I, like yesterday I could barely speak and I had to. You know, it was an, it was a nightmare. Today is going to be totally brutal, but you know, <laughs> so it's, but you know, I, it's good because it start you start getting you know calloused and ready to, to do it you know more consistently. But. <clears throat> yeah, and just a reminder for people listening, even though it's not really a reminder since it's happening now, they're playing uh, the Marlin Room of Webster Hall. Yeah. Is this your first New York City show, or did you yeah. play here? This is our first East Coast. This is our first East Coast run. All we've done is the Southwest and a lot of stuff in Florida and whatnot. So this is our first East run and hopefully before the end of the year, we're going to do the West coast and then maybe something Midwest and, uh, we kind of hit every area of the country, you know, that's kind of the attempt, you know, to mm. do that year by year. Yeah. That's awesome. Other than the long ass drives, what, what do you think is the hardest part about touring? Is it like lack of showers, lack of privacy? It's or all, I mean, all, everything, all the above. Every, like, <laughs> lack of showers. Yeah. I mean, it, that part sucks. I mean, Everybody's you know, ours. Yeah, it's like if if you had to pick your band members again, you would have to sleep with them first. And I'm not talking like sexually. Oh, I'm course, saying yeah. like sleep with them, find out if they snore, and make sure they're drunk, like drunk and non-drunk. Like we'd have to do experiments to figure out who you would pick. I don't care if they're not even that good at guitar or, or anything else, but if we had the option again, I think we'd uh, we would bring people in based off of their snoring, uh, uh, lack of snoring. You know? Yeah. 
and we are actually in a very nice van that yeah, you guys got. I mean, it could a, be a hell of a lot worse. It is. And that's what I said. When you get older, things start becoming a little more, you know, you take things for granted because you, you can have a decent van or you can have a, you know, a, like you can, wow, these things recline. Like I remember going on tour <laughs> with a bench that didn't even have a cushion. It's like, I mean, he's, he's ridden in a plastic like lawn chair for up to New Jersey and back. So, I mean, it's, you know, this is definitely nice. But as you get older, you start like, man, my bed is so comfortable. Man, showers are so nice when you can actually just take a shower, you know, once every three days. So it's like, you know, getting older is a little harder when you start. You don't rock as much anymore. Yeah, yeah. It, exactly. You know, it, the booze, you need more drinks to, <laughs> to deal just with it. Just cope with it. it yeah. yeah, exactly. To cope with it. But I mean, I, I love doing it and, and there's no better opportunity for us than to do it with guys like Unwritten Law and Phoenix CX. So, yeah, you know. wow. that's awesome. <clears throat> Let's see what else we have. Uh, New York City tonight. Where else are you playing on this tour? Finally, thank God, we have an off day tomorrow. Oh, which congratulations! I'm, I'm, yes, it's like I, it's literally my happiest moment of this whole tour is that we get an off day, and then uh, we have Pittsburgh on Monday. We've got Cleveland on Tuesday and Columbus on Wednesday, and then uh, back to Orlando with the pair of Such Gold show. Yeah. And uh, what uh, day is that? that Might as well is Friday. Yeah. Friday. Friday. All right. Yep. So it's actually so. upcoming Friday. Yep. <laughs> yeah, this has been a, a tornado of a tour for sure. We haven't gotten to see anything cool, have any good food. It's like going to all these awesome places like Philadelphia and Boston and New York. You just and get McDonald's. Pittsburgh. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, McDonald's would be a lucky thing. Like I've, I've been living on Cliff Bars and like beef jerky. So I mean, it's kind of. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> what I mean, a combo. Yeah. I mean, sometimes like every run has been like a big gap or we sleep until 10 and then we have load in like today's load in was 2 p.m so it's like and we drove from boston to here so you don't really and we got home at four in the morning last night so i yeah but everything's starting to become one day you know all all six or seven so days it's like groundhog now, so. day almost it's it's yeah like i would i wish it was groundhog day <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, yeah so uh we're a podcast that deals with concerts and touring and you've guys did your fair share of concerts is there one memorable show other than that boston fiasco not uh, but like not on this tour but like in general that we've you had some really crazy orlando shows that have, that have gotten pretty wild and i love playing orlando because that's where we've played a lot so every, everybody knows every word and it's like you know people stage diving and it's it's a crazy environment for us having not played the east coast not had a, a ton of exposure some of these rooms when we play it it's like you know, who the hell is this band? You know, it's, you know, nobody's really into it yet. But a lot, of, I mean, a lot of people like it after they hear it, obviously, but it's not, you know, it's not the same as playing to a, a crowd that knows every word course, and yelling yeah. back. But I mean, some of the shows there, I mean, memorable things. I watched a guy dive straight into a, Gosh, a, yeah. a pillar and like more or less knock himself out. What? I, <laughs> I got, we, we played a floor show there that was. Ooh, yes nice. all right you're on the podcast fuck <laughs> <laughs> we uh we played a floor show and i got basically bashed into a wall oh. and uh and, and i had to move like try to move 50 people just to get back towards the stage side and i put my foot against the wall to push off yeah. and my foot went right through the wall oh my through, god through two panels of drywall and shit and then the you know bartender was like dude you broke my wall and all the shit and, we're, and i'm like all right, our, our our other our guitarist, our other guitar guy is you know is a builder and he can do shit. So, I'm like, dude, you got to go fix this venue <laughs> like, tomorrow and shit. You know, so but yeah, that was memorable. I mean, you know, dumb things are memorable. Fights and people who of throw course, up in yeah. the middle of the show and stuff like that. But you know, that stuff's not that cool. You know. <laughs> Yes, yeah. please do not puke in the middle of the show. I will try tonight. And I wasn't yeah. talking to you. I was talking oh, to okay. fans. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you. Know, it, it's always badass. Like if you're on stage and puking, you're like, oh shit! All right, he's been fucking drinking. Yeah. Like if you're in the audience, you're like, all right, who's this asshole? I'm lucky that has not happened yet, yeah. but more, it's, it's come close a couple times. Or yeah. <laughs> or yeah, or or shit our souls. So, <laughs> but which which has happened but. so you guys uh you guys are on vacation from work or something like that like oh i gotta request two weeks i'm going on tour and then you're back to work we we both work in merchandising for bands so we kind of we kind of get lucky Welcome in that New York boys. yeah <laughs> we kind of get lucky in in that sense that a lot of this you know is work in a way it's because we're meeting a lot of bands and people are working with us and, to get shirt orders and stuff so yeah i, I basically would have to quit my job or take vacation you in order to go on this tour. No, 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 like my legit job. You would quit this? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I mean, I, f I find it like 
kind of a dream to be like, oh, I want to go on tour and get signed. But then I'm like, I realize I'd have to quit my job or go on vacation just to be able to go somewhere. So yeah, it's kind of. You don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's cool, and like I said, if I was a lot younger, I wish that I wish that the these the guy the guys that are in Suck Brick, we had all been together when we were younger, because we would have done a lot more stuff. Now it's like, you know, we love playing, we love playing, we love doing you know strings of ten to fifteen dates, kind of. But to get in a van for six months is something at this point I you know I have very little desire to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like I said, it's it, it's fun. You know, six days in, it's fun still. Day eight, day nine, day ten. That's where you start being like, all right, all right, I've, I'm tired of beef jerky. I'm tired of cliff bars. You know, all I want is a shower, a bed, you know, be able to watch reruns of uh, or episodes of The Walking Dead. You know, it's like, it's things like that, the tiny little stuff. You so know. you haven't hit up like a, a rest area or anything like that to take like a shower or something? Uh, we took a shower last night, <laughs> finally in Boston, which is the, what, day five or six? They, uh, yeah, they, maybe day six. So we took a shower finally like, yesterday, all of us together at the same time. It was, <laughs> it was nice. <laughs> but yeah, it, no, yeah, it was actually my friend's apartment it was about maybe 40 square feet. And, yeah, something like that. And probably, it's similar to New York. Like you, you spend five grand and you get like the size of this van. Yeah. But yeah, it had a really small apartment, and all of us are like no, no sleeping bags because we're dumb. No pillows, no anything. Strewn across uh, like wood floor. We slept maybe two hours, I think, and got in the van and drove over to New York. So, damn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you guys uh, battling any Ill illnesses right now? Any colds? Any anything I think worse? <laughs> coming from Florida and 100% humidity. Yeah, and, that's gotta uh, fuck you this, up. This weird weather in Baltimore was freezing. I mean, the the the, the venue was. I, I swear, it had to be 15 inside the venue. <laughs> I we played. I mean, I was shivering like before we started, and, and I mean. So obviously, I'm, obviously, you can hear my voice. I don't have much of a voice right now. And but then I again, can, that's after five days of singing. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. No break, I mean, every, so. everyone's kind of battling that at this point. Like guys in Phoenix last night were, were you know, having fans jump on and, and sing along and stuff because everyone's just kind of battling the same thing right now. You know, they had they had done I think four days more than us in a row. So yeah, I mean, they're, they're at day ten or eleven now. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it was a, it was a very most tours you get you know four or five dates and you have a day off you know and this one is it's kind of oh yeah yeah sure you can do a baltimore load in at 2 p.m after playing atlanta and finishing at 2 a.m yeah. you know it's like that's a 12-hour gap it's a 14-hour ride so it's i don't know yeah sure we'll be there <laughs> you know so well, i mean you don't have any other choice it's <laughs> no, either no, you're it's, there and i you think play the biggest thing don't. is getting there and kind of annoying the promoter like oh these guys don't take it seriously well yeah, I mean, sorry, man. We just drove, you know, 14 hours and through the night. We just finished at 2 a.m. there. And, I mean, I get it that, you know, we obviously we didn't set this up. It was kind of done through, you know, booking guys uh -huh. and whatnot. But so it, it's just a, to me, having toured a lot when we were younger, that was a tough drive, I would think. Like, normally that wouldn't be set up that way. But, I mean, as far as illness goes, I mean, all of us are battling little things. It's like yeah. the age is probably the worst illness that we all have. <laughs> Yeah, and that yeah. there's no cure for. Yeah, no. there's no cure. I think the other thing is uh, the pizza and beer at four in the morning, right before you go to bed, is also uh, you know it doesn't sit as well as it no. used to. <laughs> for for some reason we for some reason it's not like we haven't tried that before thirty six hundred times in our lives to eat, <laughs> to drink as much beer as you can and eat as much pizza as you can at four in the morning. But I continually do it. Yeah, like I I need to seek counseling or like help. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, you know, when you know when you have a problem and you just can't stop yourself from eating pizza and drinking beer at four in the morning. And so I should probably seek therapy. Well, that's, that's the first uh, step is admitting, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I admit. Yeah, I, I am, uh, what is the thing, helpless to my, or, or what is the, I don't even I know. Forgot. I don't know. I don't want to offend anybody because I'm sure saying anything at this point will offend anybody. But Yeah, I so. mean, that also turns a lot of people off from AA is it's basically you give yourself to a higher power. Like it's yeah, purely the... religious based and if someone needs help and essentially, okay, I don't, you know, I don't like God. I don't know anything about a God. I don't believe. Now what? Are you screwed out of that or? Well, you're you know? obviously not allowed to AA then. Yeah. I mean, if I mean, there's strict rules. I mean, you got, what is, I think there's commandments. There's things like that. So you gotta, you gotta, you know, live by the code. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yes. But yes, exactly. literally <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. 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 So you guys are on uh, Smart Punk Records, and you just released a album not too long ago. Yep. Yeah, we uh, released uh, the Beast Goes On. Yep. Uh, I don't know which month it was, but August August last year it came out, and uh, 
Yeah, it's been awesome. It's How's been, the reception? It's been great. We've had a lot of really positive reviews and looks at it and a lot of plays and listens online and stuff. So I think it's been really good. It's I don't know if you guys heard it or... We heard uh, some songs. Cool. Didn't yeah. go the entire way through. I mean, I'm going to, but... Oh, oh, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that cool. either. Yeah, man, th thanks a lot. Hey, you're, hey you're as good as your word. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Right. yeah. Dude, we're awesome. You should take my word for it. We're really good. <laughs> Yeah. And from what I did here, it's pop punk with some aggressive vocals, like Four Year Strong influences, yeah, a little Set Your Goals in there as well. Yeah, we get a lot of that Set Your Goals, Four Year Strong comparisons. Um, you know, I think all of us grew up listening to a lot of the like fat bands and the old school epitaph mm -hmm. bands like, you know, Pennywise and Lagwagon. Yeah, you Bad know, Religion, Bad no Religion. Effects. I think that's where most of our influences come. And, you know, and then a couple of our guys like, you know, Brand New and stuff like that, which is, so I think we kind of get a hodgepodge of you know shit put together to make the make kind of what this band is which is good yeah. because it's not the same you know pop punk style it's not like back in 2001 where everyone tried to mimic uh jordan from newfound glory's voice yeah the little thing like every single scene band always did that no matter where you were in the country we were listening to something yesterday our, our other guitarist is a like complete like fangirl of bands like reliant k and stuff like that <laughs> like, it's like <laughs> it's whatever is as poppy as it can get he he is all about it and i think he played like in a 10 hour drive i thought he played the same band at least 46 <laughs> times but he's he kept shouting out new names new names and i was like this is the same guy singing right am i am i wrong so but i mean a lot of those bands are great i just i like when there's a difference between something and something else and then a lot of times with, with quote unquote pop punk we're getting the same recycled sound over and yeah. over and over and not that there's anything wrong with that i think you know it's you got to do what you got to do but if it's the same noise over and over i don't know the difference between that and you know the next one and that's the problem because so, everyone loves a mixture of things like that's why a band like a day to remember is so fucking huge yeah i mean yeah they're i mean obviously they blend things pretty well together i mean hardcore and pop punk, pop and, punk yeah. yeah like yeah. it's actually going through mainstream rock yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're like. Did you on. think like ten years ago, like knowing this band, you're like, all right, they might be big, and like same thing with Rise Against. No, Rise we, Against is a fucking radio staple now, which is nuts. We were lucky younger because we knew a lot of those guys growing up. They they played a lot of really small shows. There would be like twenty kids at it, and now all of a sudden they're on. You know, they're playing arenas and stadiums, and you know, that's for, I mean, that's great for them. And the like I said, their music has transcended just being pop punk or hardcore. And now they're you know playing like Hello Rockville and. You know, <laughs> yeah, self help. Yeah. You know, and, that's, all, and they did that. Yeah, they did that whole yeah, thing. Yeah, I know, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> look, look what pop punk can do for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's no longer the Blink One Eight Two, Jimmy Eat World. I mean, it's just it's yeah. evolving. And now there's this whole other world of pop punk that's been created. That I mean, people call it pop punk, which is like, you know, the, the indie, like almost like shoegazing world of they call it pop punk. I don't. Every time I hear, it, I'm like, like foxing. Like bands like that? Yeah, or, yeah. like, you know, they're, they're, I mean, there's a lot of great bands that are cool, but I wouldn't consider it necessarily pop punk, you know, but it's kind of like this weird blend now where, you know, it's, they say, oh, it's a pop punk show, and, and you go, and it's like, well, this is four indie bands playing, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, um, <clears throat> what was it, back, there was like a weird evolution, like five years ago, you had bands like Balance and Composure, Law Disputes. Yeah. You know, bands like that came out. Yeah. And they basically pushed pop punk to the side, and now that sound's being pushed aside. Pop punk's now back. Someone has seen, like, you have bands like The Wonder Years, who now doesn't sound like pop punk, and I'm confusing the shit out of this <laughs> audience who has no idea about any of this, but. Very great writers, though. I mean, they know how to write a song, for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Soupy you know, is a fucking lyricist. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that's one of the, the biggest uh, qualities of, of The Wonder Years. You know, it's definitely writing. You know? Yeah. So, real quick, let's go into uh, the history of Suck Bar Kid. Cool. So let's start from somewhat of the beginning. I know you guys have to go in pretty soon, so. Uh, I think, I mean, we started, me, him, and uh, Dan. Yeah. yeah, us three got together. We started playing in, uh, it is in your, like, little room with a, yeah. one acoustic guitar. <laughs> I mean, we kind of, like I said, the goal was not to do anything for real. It was yeah. just like, we had all been in bands. We didn't want to commit, really, to doing anything. It was kind of like, well, let's just write songs, and we like it. We'll get as drunk as we can, and we'll go play a, a show. <laughs> And that was kind of like that was like the goal that was like if we had a chalkboard it would have been number one <laughs> you know like play a show we don't care if anybody goes give us beer tickets you know it would have been you know number one so we started doing that we we wrote maybe 10 songs over the course of a uh, maybe six months or so and then we went in and, and recorded them but i mean that, it it kind of came about in a weird way like we scoured for drummers we didn't have a drummer for a while um <clears throat> hayden came down from illinois and uh and and he's actually a guitar player too 
and we kind of we just kind of said hey you want to play bass because we don't need a third guitar you know <laughs> so and he's like sure i've never played it you know let's try it and he's actually pretty good and danny we had to like beg because i think that danny is probably one of the best drummers in orlando maybe there's you know maybe there's a handful of them and it's like he had just been on tour with the misfits and a bunch of other bands like and he was just sick of it he didn't want to do anything he's like you know i could do this i could drink beer and play songs and, and not take anything seriously yeah. And so we we got him. It took some convincing. I mean, he was just like, "I'm not doing anything serious." And like, and that's, I think that was the whole kind of gist of it. And it kind of just formed together and accidentally became serious. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. is your goal now to be touring in the in biggest band in the yeah, world, yeah. man? Well, obviously you you would love to do that. It could be like a dream. But <clears throat> is that your goal now, other than drinking and <laughs> playing? Uh, just playing? No, my goal is still drinking but no no, no I'm still number one on the still, big board. yeah we, no one on the big board is beer tickets, beer tickets. you gotta add but, the 1a to there now yeah. yes one one a yeah. be the biggest fan of, no we're i mean we're happy to be able to do this if it was up to me i would play one show take a week off and then play another show and then a week off and that because i mean i love doing it but i hate being under the gun i hate the pressure of it it's not like pressure of like just like oh you got to get there you got to get there at two all right now you're there all right now wait around until nine or yeah. wait around until eight. It's like, that's six hours. What am I going to do? There's a bar here. <laughs> you know, it's like the earlier, the better is kind of for us. But if we play later in the night, it's, it's always, you never know what you're going to get. You know, our guitarist may fall over. Or I may not be able to, to stand up. So, I mean, it, yeah, uh, it, it's crazy because literally our guitarist, Dan, can probably Houdini six tall boy beers without us even seeing it. And then all of a sudden <laughs> he's falling like all over the place. We're like, Damn it, Dan. How did you drink so much so quick? Yeah. Damn, Daniel. That's why, I mean, like, our ideal scenario is not being in the venue for six to eight hours before playing, you know, because, I mean, there's nothing to do. Yeah, there I, mean, what, I, I can only check my cell phone, you know, so many times, and then, you know, I sit there for... So, I mean, to tour constantly and permanently is not really what I want to do. I mean, if we keep getting good offers and good tours, and then we're going to, you know, we're obviously going to continue doing them. But we'd, we'd like to do just kind of enough to where we can still, like he just had a baby, you know, oh, I, have a, I have a daughter at home. So, so, I mean, all of us have, you know, Things going on. wives and families and stuff like that. So it's like, we want to do this as much as we can without like destroying <laughs> all of these other people and, and their, you know, and kids and stuff like that. Yeah. So, song about that. yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's, uh, is there any songs about that, Dan? No. <laughs> no. Most people don't care about their families, you know? So, uh, you know. <laughs> Explain the name and the reference. Oh, come on. Uh, it this. was a German porno film yes. that we that we that we saw when we were headlining uh, all the German festivals that we have played. But no, no, I'm kidding. It, it's a it's a Home Alone reference, actually Home Alone 2. And uh it's the name is kind of weird because like just people have heard it and and they're like oh that must be like a you know a hardcore band or a metal band or whatever and we're not even near that sound <laughs> so you know other people find it like it's kind of offensive like what are they trying to say like is it a violent reference is it and it, it's like I, I mean it's it's just i mean have you seen home alone or home alone too it's not <laughs> you know so i mean I, it, it kind of came about just we liked it i think it, we thought it was funny we didn't even have a name for i think the first six months when we were we, were, we played shows without a name like just like we're like oh, like I said, goal one, beer drink tickets. beer tickets. Yes. So somebody would come to us like, hey, I know you're working on some stuff. You want to play a show? We'd be like, yeah. And then we, they'd promote our contacts or whatever and be like, well, what's your name? I'm like, ah, oh, we don't have a name right now. Like, well, what do you want me to put on the flyer? I'm like, I don't know. We'll figure something out, man. It's not my problem. I that's not part of one A. Do you know, like, any good names or no? <laughs> oh, us. We had an entire whiteboard that yeah. I think we stared at for six months and. We like this one the most, and we just kind of were using it as a phrase and things like that. <laughs> I think the the biggest thing was, well, since we know we're not really trying to do anything crazy, it's like what will stick out so that we don't have to do that much work to you know push our name. So we've gotten a lot of like people that are like, oh crap, I you know I saw these bands in this list, and yours really like popped out at us, like suck brick it. What is that? So yeah, yeah, I think I think that was part of it too. We wanted to kind of pop on a flyer, you know, to where all right, every band has this like. Yeah, the, the same. Yeah, some like the same name over uh -huh. and over, you know. And, and I like the fact that ours kind of draws some, whether you think it's distasteful or intriguing or whatever, it draws a reaction. You know. <clears throat> well, it's better than that other uh, name of that German porno you. Uh, yeah, the German porno before, yeah. was uh, was, was too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's, I guess let's uh, start wrapping this up. Just uh, one last question from me. If you could tour with anyone, who would it be? Hmm. I know, generic question, but, you know, we get some interesting answers. Do you have one? Yeah, I guess. I mean, we would not fit the bill, but if we <laughs> could tour with anyone. Anyone. I would probably have to say the Foo Fighters, just because they seem like a bunch of rad dudes. But um, I can tell you that we will not fit that bill ever. <laughs> Actually, you know what? First time I saw the Foo Fighters, Against Me opened for them. Oh, that's when I first saw them. Oh, yeah, sure, and yeah. I was Jimmy Eat World and uh, wait, Against Me, Jimmy Eat World and Foo Fighters. That's that's the one that I saw. It oh, was no, in no, Orlando. No, I think that was was not a. Was that a Green Day tour? Oh, I don't know. In Orlando, I won. I actually won tickets from the radio. The only thing I've ever won from the radio were tickets to go see Foo Fighters. And then I got there, and I'm like, oh, who's even opening up for the Foo Fighters? And then Against Me stuff was up on stage. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, that's cool. They're like direct openers. And then they're like, all right, next band is Jimmy Eat World. I was like, oh, uh -huh. wow, I really won out on this one. And then yeah, really. Foo Fighters was Yeah, on. my show was uh, Against Me, and then you had a surge tank in of System of a Down. Oh, wow. And then the Foo nice. Fighters. So yeah, you could fit in with the Foo Fighters. Right, yeah. Right. I mean, obviously, we're already doing it. We're playing with Unwritten Law and Phoenix Hex. So, I mean, yeah. we're, yes. that's, our, our other guitarist would probably say that would be yeah. his dream tour package. Yeah. You know, for the minute I even told him, that, like, like, hey, we, we can possibly do these Unwritten Law for Phoenix dates. And he's like, possibly no, no we're doing this. He's, he's, <laughs> like, he's like, no way, dude. We got to do it. I'm like, dude, I don't know if we can, I don't know if we can take 10 days and go do this. So. He was, I mean, his girl, his, well, actually, fiance's birthday was literally like the weekend. We, yeah, the first night that we left. And I remember he was saying like, no, we won't be able to do those first few shows, man. We gotta, I gotta, you know, we're celebrating her birthday. I'm like, come on, there's gotta be something. He's like, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll make it work. I'll make it work. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's uh, no fiance, but oh, uh, no. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, no, but yeah, she's a good lady. She is a great lady. She's a good egg. She's good a great egg. egg. Yes. Yep. Last question. Any equipment, any brands you'd like to uh, plug? Uh, any, no, like, even, like, you knew? Cause not like, until they give us whatever we sponsorships. need. Sponsorships? This no. is how it works. They listen to Ah, uh, okay. Oh, this All right, what do we want? <laughs> All right. No, I mean, we, I mean, we use a lot of cool gear that, I mean, I like what we're using. Um, uh, obviously, we have a couple of orange cabs and things like that that are, that are great. Um, you know, yeah, he, his Hughes and Kettner head is awesome, Dan. Yeah, I should. Yeah, we should probably make a plug to Hughes and Kettner since I've been using that amp for like eight years, and it probably works now seven out of ten times because of how old and beat up it is. So yeah, Hughes and Kettner, man, I love you guys. Actually, please sponsor them. <laughs> well, I mean, well, this is what happens if they don't provide us a new head. He's still going to use it, and it's only going to work seven out of ten times, <laughs> making the head look worse. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they should probably send us ahead, and then we will make sure it works 10 times out of 10. Yeah. Yeah. There we yeah. go. All right, so let me uh, do some plugging for you guys. You're on Facebook, facebook.com slash suckbrickkidfl. Or... Okay, same thing with the Twitter and the Instagram. You're wrapping up the tour with uh, Unwritten Law, Phoenix TX, and you also have a huge show coming up April 8th with Such Golden Pairs down in uh, Orlando. Yep. Do you know the venue offhand? Back booth. Back booth. Back booth. Yep. <laughs> All right, tickets on, are on sale, I'm assuming, but yep. they're not going to last long. Nope. You should buy them now. If there you we live go. in New York, you should definitely buy them now and fly <laughs> down. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, guys, anything else you want to uh, promote real quick besides uh, uh, buy the album? Besides behind the barricade, you know, oh, we're, we're going to plug that for sure. But, uh, yeah, buy the album. Don't buy the album. Steal the album. Whatever you want to do. I mean, listen to the album. I think that, that would be best. And, you know, come see us if we're in your town. Damn right. Dan, plugs. <clears throat> My band Dead Tide, I guess. Uh, I'm being like a dead horse on this one, but we got a, a huge show April 10th at The Chance in Poughkeepsie, New York with Soil Work and Fear Factory. Oh, I, do forget nice. I didn't forget. I didn't forget. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll be there. Um, check out my Instagram. It's basically all the same, you know, even PlayStation Network. <laughs> John hates this one. I'm just going to keep hitting it until he, <laughs> until he likes it. But it's uh, Rock Drummer, R-C-K-D-R-U-M-M-3-R. All the Facebook handles are the same, so uh, just check that out. Other than that, please like Behind the Barricade. Yep, and you could like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Behind the Barricade, Twitter at Behind the Cade, C-A-D-E, Instagram, Instagram.com slash Behind the Barricade. And yes, we are making it rain in this bitch. <laughs> and uh, I'll actually be out in Vegas next week, so all of you West Coasters want to come hang out, I'll be at the M Casino, I want to say. It's a little off the strip, but I'll be there from Friday to Monday. You want to hang out, let me know. Hit us up. Suck Brick Kid, thank you very much. Grant, Arturo. Thank you. Thanks for All having right. us, man. Thanks.